So in video 2265, we looked at building this monster. Now we're going to look at how to go about using it. It comes supplied with this, which is the plug socket. And unfortunately, this thing here is a preparatory plug. It's square instead of a normal kettle lead. So you have to keep that bit and use that bit. But I'm living in England and they sent me a European plug, which I was a bit disappointed about. Now, I could use an adapter, but I decided that what I would do is fit a UK plug to it, so I chopped off the end. When I chopped off the end, I discovered that the colour coding of the wire was according to the UK standard, probably European standard, where we've got blue lint for neutral, brown for live, and green and yellow for the earth. But there's no guarantee that those in fact go to the right prongs. So I did a continuity check and they do indeed. So it was a piece of cake to rewire this plug to UK standard because they'd used the right wires. Now that might seem a little obtuse really, but it's a degree of comfort. It's this kind of thing where you have a, a length of wire, it's much cheaper just to use tail ends of any old part you've got lying about, it would keep the cost down. So you don't worry about such things. But when I tested this, it's actually up to code, and that gives me a degree of comfort about the whole thing. So I rewired my plug. Now, the cable is at that long, it's about a metre long, so you need to be a metre from your socket. Of course, if you're not a metre from your socket, you'll have to run an extension or put an extension on your cable, but that is proprietary, which is a bit of a pain. Anyway, let's get it plugged in and turn it on. So I did that, plugged it in, and nothing, it wouldn't start. I thought, oh my God, and then I noticed this, this little gray box right there to the back and left. If we flip that open, there you go, what we've got here is an RCBO. It's a safety device that combines the advantages of a miniature circuit breaker with a residual current device. What it means is that little thing protects you from overcurrent or a short circuit. That really is very cool, eh? And this thing will draw about one and a half kilowatts, which sounds like a lot, but when you think about it, your kettle's likely to be three kilowatts, so it's got pretty much excessive kind of uh, safety involved in there because this will draw about seven or eight amps here in the UK with 230 volts and that's a lot of protection to have for a machine like this. So impressive stuff and there's one more thing I wanted to point out to you before we actually turn it on. And it's that. You'll find one of these left and right on the main carriage and there's one that carries the print head as well. And basically you undo these two screws, use that knurled knob here to tighten that belt to a nice tension. Set a D flat. Then when you've done that you tighten those screws back up and you can adjust this belt tension really easily or replace the belt I guess if the belt wears out. Now I do love a nice machine, and, and this is a nice machine, but despite loving them, I don't worship them. I mean, you know, some people absolutely worship cars, and all the best to them. But for me, a car is a way for getting from A to B, from my home to do my shopping, and a 3D printer, well, it's exactly the same to my mind. It's a way of getting something out of my head, A, into my hands as a real thing, B. I only really want to know how to go from A to B. I don't want to know the ins and outs of it, but of course every machine has its own little quirks, so it's worth running through them. But the idea here isn't to fully understand this machine, it's how to get it working so I can go from A to B, and that's what I'm interested in. But anyway, let's turn this on and have a look at the screens. So you get a beautiful big screen that's really easy to use, even with my fat stubby fingers and with my terrible short sight. And you can see immediately what you've got on here. The first thing we need to do is level it. So press level and confirm. And you'll get this grid showing and the print head will return to home and it will automatically begin a probing process of the plate to see how level that plate is. So what it's doing is heating up the bed and the head. So there's it heating the head, you can see the temperature there, and there's it heating the bed. It'll heat the bed to 60 degrees and the head to 140 degrees before it begins its probing process. 
And when it's done that, it'll go to the home position and start probing the surface. And it'll do that across a hundred points, finding out how level that bed actually is. Okay, when that's done, you'll need to adjust the Z offset. That's the height of the print head from the bed, and this will present this screen. Here what you've got is the amount that it'll move by, 0 0.01, 0 0.1, one millimeter, the up and the down. And in your box of tricks, you'll find this. It's a shim of steel, and that should be able to slide under the print head there. And as you can see, it can't. The print head is too close to the bed, so I adjust that offset. What I tend to do is a little bit crazy. I'll get one millimeter and up, because I couldn't get it under, it needs to go up. If it went under too easily, it would need to go down. And now I can get my shim really easily under there, and I need to lower it. And I go 0.1 of a millimeter, because I'm not going to have to press this down button more than 10 times, because I've gone up one millimeter. I now go down by 0.1, so I'm going to need 10 presses. So down it goes, and try again. If it's still too loose, keep pressing it downward by 0.1 of a millimeter until it's not loose. Now it's quite tough to slide it, not too tough, but I still need to go up a little bit. So hit 0.01, up one, and we'll give it a go. And now it's a nice sort of sliding fit, but still quite tight. We're done. We can press confirm. And what we get is this little display of numbers. Now what it's telling you is the height of the bed from the print head. And there's an allowance here. If it's more than 0.51 millimetres, you're going to need to adjust the bed. But if the difference between your highest point and your lowest point is less than that, well, it's kind of up to you because there's two kinds of perfect. There's perfect perfect where everything's zero and then acceptably perfect. And of course we live in a real world, so acceptably perfect is just fine. And acceptably perfect for this machine is about half a millimetre between the high and the low point. Now, if we look here, my high point is 0.44 millimetres. If we look here, it's minus 0.53. If we add those two together, we get about a millimetre difference. And unfortunately, that's too much, so we're going to have to adjust the height of the bed by doing the bed height adjustment. Right, to do this bed height adjustment, you're going to need a couple of things. The first thing is these things. These are plates that come in with your kit, and you'll notice there's little holes in them. There's little holes in them because it lets you get to some screws that we need to get to, and you need the Allen key that also came in your kit to do that. But before you do that, you've got to think about this, this big old base. This base weighs something like 60 or 70 kilos all by itself. Now, with all the best will in the world, there is no floor that is level. So if you just stick this down, what will happen is the weight of the base will twist everything and it'll be a nightmare trying to get the bed level because you didn't level the base. So you're also going to need a 19 millimeter spanner and a level because right under here are adjustable feet. And there they are, right there. Now that is welded all into one piece, and that's the bit you adjust, and there is the locking nut. So you use your spanner to undo the locking nut, and then pop it on there, and raise or lower that foot until the bed is actually level. And there's one in each corner, and you go around just making sure that the actual base unit is level to, your, is level to itself. Because guaranteed, your floor is not level. When you bother to level this base, you can then do the bed, and you take that off, and this one is going to get in its place, and there's the screws I've been burbling on about. We pop that on, so we're up. we've got access to those screws where we can level the bed, the bed now that the base has actually been leveled first. So this is a start screen, and to do this job we want settings. We want advanced settings and then platform measurement. There we go, and we get this screen here. Each one of these corresponds to a hole that we're going to adjust the bed with. So if we hit one, it will go to screw position one. So we hit one.
and it measures it and you can see it there it says minus 0 0.03 well that means is that bed is three one hundredths of a millimeter too low in order to raise it we slacken the nut in order to lower it if that were a positive figure we tighten the nut and it tells you right there which way to turn it and how much a full turn will actually do so we turn that nut to make that zero so grab your allen key and give it a little twiddle now remember it was a negative so we want to tighten it up a little bit so give a little bit of a tighten and then remeasure it once we've twiddled it the right way we get a zero we can move on to the next and we keep on doing that until all of these are filled with a zero by pressing these buttons to move the head okay so we've pressed every button all our readings have been set to zero by twiddling that little screw and we're done we're ready to press the level which is right there but at the moment of course we need to replace those sheets with holes in them with the PEI sheet so we need to move that to do that press prepare we've got the Z axis here let's move it up and that will move the head out of the way so we can swap those sheets back over having done that we can run the leveling program and off it goes So when you've done that you'll have to do the Z offset again and when you're happy with that confirm it and you'll get this table of numbers. Now we need to check these numbers for the high point and the low point. For me the high point is there at 0.28 and the low point is there at minus 0.12. We add those two together and we get 0.4 so it's well within the parameter that we're looking for which is 0.51. So we can save that data. Okay, there we go. Built and set up and ready to take some filament and do some printing. Now I've got some ideas in my head about what I want to do. And some people have made some excellent suggestions as well. The software is on there, a little USB stick. And it's just Elegoo Cura, so it's not challenging. We've done videos on installing and using Cura and Elegoo Cura before. So all we do is load that software up, slice it and get printing. The main thing to do now is decide on what I'm going to print and then print it. And I can't decide if I'm going to do something wild and wacky, something different and new, or repeat something old but much bigger, or take on some people's suggestions. And no doubt, over the months, I'm going to do all of those. But the next thing I'm going to do is print something out using this because it's now ready to go. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.